On the don't touch it. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. One minute. Uh, good morning, one and Welcome to the second day session on industrial design. Today, resource person is Mr. P.K. Vengatramana, head global support, ITA, Institute of Industrial Design. And I am proud to uh, introduce the today's speaker to the audience. The speaker having a degree in mechanical engineering and postgraduate degree in uh, Master of Business Administration, and uh, previously he was working with a company called as CM Software Private Limited as application engineer. Before that, he was working as a product development engineer with the uh, center, and he's having expertise in uh, product design development, product expansion, strategic business planning, business development, revenue growth, promotional strategy. He has published more than uh, 20 books in the area of uh, computer aided design and computer aided manufacturing. 
is having both uh, technical and uh, managerial knowledge and of course the organizing organizing committee welcome vengram uh, vengramana for this uh, second day session now i request mr vengramana to start his uh thank you sir for the nice introduction uh, very good morning to each one of you uh before uh, starting the session i like to ensure that am i audible so there is a chat box in your uh, screen if i am audible please type audible in the chat box uh, so that will ensure that uh, uh, i am um, reachable to most of you so i request each one of you if you are listening to me if you are, my voice is audible kindly type audible in the chat box okay thank you mr abhishek for confirmation how about others am i audible oh thank you very much i am getting a lot of confirmations thank you very much okay we used to we need to use this chat box regularly because uh, we are in an online mode so the uh, ensuring that we have a proper communication and dialogue uh, between all of us please uh, ensure the chat box uh, okay and also i request all of you to be in mute mode we have a mic please put it in mute mode if you have any doubts in between the presentation i request you to uh, enter your doubts in the chat box okay at the end of the session we can unmute and we can have a discussion right and you also have a raise a hand option in case if you want to interrupt in between and uh, ask few things you can use the raise a hand option which will also be available in your participants window okay so these are basic instructions so are you ready to start sir so please type ready if you are feeling that we are ready to start please type ready in the chat box if you are ready to start yeah thank you very much so first of all uh, i thank each one of you for participating in this webinar and i thank the uh, management of uh, nagarjuna engineering college and uh, the convener for organizing the program and uh, given me an opportunity to talk to each one of you indeed it's a pleasure for me uh, to be a part of this program and share my uh, uh, the knowledge uh, to the audience and also looking forward to hear more from you also i can also learn from each one of you uh, on the experience whatever you have uh, with you so with this introduction uh, i like to introduce myself my name is uh, venkat raman uh, basically i am mechanical engineer passed out uh, 20 years back and then i uh, joined as an uh, engineering services uh, uh, what i can say uh, executive so my job is to take care of the projects uh, related to cat ca we are using ideas those time ideas is one of the popular software uh, in the ninth, late 90s so, so uh, i was an uh, project engineer we were working on ideas software and then uh, i went into different roles then i did my masters in uh, automotive electronics so that's my specialization and also i did my uh, uh, graduate in uh, marketing because after some point of time i want to move into the managerial line so i just uh, started understanding the management line and uh, currently i am working in uh, institute of industrial design which is a division of cat center where i am focusing on um, skilling the engineers on this industrial design process both uh, mechanical as well as civil engineers as well as electrical engineers on the industrial design process about institute of industrial design it is a, a new division formed 5 years back the objective is we wanted to bring out talents who can design the products from the scratch normally we see that we take a history of the product and then we develop something on top of it but here the objective is we need to train the engineers where when the customer is having a requirement from the customer requirement how to design the product Uh, from the styling perspective from the aesthetic perspective from the ergonomic perspective uh, from the design perspective from the manufacturing perspective we need to include every factor in the design and come out with a product a winning product which is designed in india by the indian engineers to the global market so that is our objective so we have a target of actually 100 engineers in the beginning years and the target is to touch 1000 in next 2 uh, years time we already produced 400 engineers who are uh, working in different organizations uh, particularly in the design sector uh, that's our motto and that's about our company uh, let a, a brief introduction about the company uh, sir video is not shared i'll share the video once i start my presentation right 
so my first request to you is please all of you be safe uh make sure that you maintain uh, the social distancing and also take care of your family and make sure that you are hygienic and uh, let us follow the social distancing and also the policies which is given by the MHO and make sure that we are all keeping ourselves safe because if you as Mr. Alibaba told Alibaba is actually the the person who is behind this Chinese mega marketing if you are successful what what will define this year means if you are live alive this year that itself we can say that you are successful and other things will be automatically happen when you are alive right so having said this uh, let me get into the discussion of the industry development industrial design my topic given today is on um, industrial design so i will start the presentation with uh, the product development process and then i will go deep into the the industrial design the topic may go a uh, little more than one hour to complete including the doubt clarification session so though i have given a one hour slot i will just take a little more than one hour to complete the session okay i will uh, ask uh, a few can questions to understand whether you got my point please be available in the chat box okay and uh, we will start interacting okay let me get into the session so i'm going to share my screen uh, and then after sharing the screen i'll ask you whether it is visible please confirm it is visible uh, let me share the screen Yeah, I am trying to share the screen content. Yes, I have picked the screen. Okay, now it is showing. It is sharing. Uh, you can type visible if you feel that uh, the PowerPoint is visible. You can see a PowerPoint with a rendered image. Sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Pawan. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for confirming. Very good. So I believe most of the people attending today are from a mechanical background or a product development background or from an electrical background because the the point what we are going to discuss today is very much applicable to mechanical, electrical engineer and anyone who is involved in the the product development process. So I am going to start with the, the product development process. But before getting into the product development, I also wanted to share how the the life is going to be after lockdown. Uh, we attended a uh, uh, few meetings with the industry people, so we had taken into considerations all their ideas and perspectives. So I am just consolidating their ideas and perspective. How the life will be there after lockdown? The first thing what you will change, you say, is there will be a lot of self reliance. That means. we will have more goods produced within the country rather than importing from outside the country so that is one major change you will see that so there will be localization will be more after the lockdown period that's a good news for all of us focus will be given on reducing the waste and making sure that the existing product is used wisely because we know how difficult uh, it is to we are from, from a saving uh, life we are all moved to a very uh, expansive life that's what uh, recently so i am a 90s kid so we all brought up on a savings method only our family taught us on how to make savings but today the modern day people they all moved sure, the savings is not at all a main thing they all went towards uh, spending their everyday earning but today again it is we are going back to the old thing you have to start making the savings each and everything you should not uh, waste whether it's a food whether it is a material whether it is a uh, knowledge whatever it is you make sure that it is conserved and used wisely okay and of course safety safety to life safety to human beings safety to the product so safety part of it um well, i think i got annotation request i'm sorry sir i i if you give annotation request i don't know if you write anything it will be disturbing so i'm just declining the request sorry about it okay uh, so you are just uh, ensuring that the product whatever is designed is safely designed all right and then connected so this is where 
uh, we are all moving towards sitting from one place i can control the things happening in another place that is a connected environment so we are all uh, this live session is a, a beautiful example of connected environment we are not meeting face to face but still we are interacting with each other through the internet and lot of online application and laptops uh, we are interacting sitting from home you can control the machines which is in your factory suppose on a sunday afternoon uh, you are a product manager you are sitting in your home uh, on a sunday afternoon suddenly the labor calls and say that sir uh, the production is going on some problem with the machine you no need to go to the factory and uh, physically do the check up unless it is very critical if it is a may, uh, concern, small concern we can just log in from the laptop connect to the machine and understand how the, where the things went wrong and try to fix it remotely so this is actually called as the, the connected environment this is called as a connected environment we call the connected services people also give it as a different name called as internet of things <coughs> this is also the part of industry 4.0 right so people are moving towards this connected environment we could talk about connected cars we talk about smart tv smart products so everything is becoming connected that's where the world is moving towards okay so quickly moving on now when i talk about self reliance the good thing about this is people started lot of insourcing than outsourcing so now they know it is very uh, difficult to get people uh, get the job done from outside world it's not difficult it is becoming very costly now the cash flow has become a small so they wanted to make sure that they cannot have the lavishness of spending outside they want to see that whether that same kind of uh, quality and output can they get it locally that's how the companies are uh, looking towards it the kind of quality the kind of service they used to get from an Uh, outside the country like say western countries and uh, americas the same thing can i get it because we are spending a huge amount of money uh, out on outsourcing the design services uh, i am talking about design service itself we are spending huge amount of money because there is a lack of talent in india we are ba basically labor and uh, production related things we are doing good but when it comes to a pure design we are still lacking yes we have done good in software it coding etc indians have done uh, remarkably well but when it comes to code design we have to still ag admit that we are still far behind the the market expectations or the global expectations that's why still the companies who do a startup in india for the design services they will still look for the foreign countries um, when i say design services it talks about the industrial design and talks about the thing when it comes to modeling and production yes we are doing okay but when it comes to the proper design we are still outsourcing it now the situation is going to change now the companies are now looking forward to get the local talents get ready for this thing because we get uh, reduced cost reduced expenditure and we can also patent it if the design is made locally but only challenge is the skills has to be important that is something uh, the students has to start focusing on apart from your engineering knowledge or engineering textbook we have to we also need to learn the the design knowledge the proper application design knowledge if you learn that it will be a good opportunity both for the country as well as for the self development of course recycling is another area where people are focusing the, they are trying to recycle the materials because uh, because mining itself is going to be a challenging after the uh, the corona effect because the environmental factors are getting tighter and tighter and materials are diminishing so how to recycle the existing material for proper use it's already there in the game but it is going to become intensive after this lockdown when you do that you will have the less import options and then uh, you will have a clean environment and you can also save lot of money when you go for a reduced waste option and safety which was considered a least priority by many of the uh, Uh, startups now they are going to give this as a the primary thing see the corona has thought uh, many good thing also apart from all the effect it has created you have to be safety you are trying to bring back some good habits washing your hands regularly that was our culture right but some we lost the culture we started using tissue paper we lost the culture but today we are bringing back the good culture washing the hands keeping ourselves clean uh, all these good things uh, is is only to make sure that we are moving towards a safe world and similarly when it comes to industry 
people are giving importance to safety whether it is a touch safety or whether it is a impact safety or whether it is a what you can say the radiation safety whatever it is now that is going to be given importance government is also putting strict regulations to ensure that the people are safe over here right so next collaboration or what we talk of the go online so the internet of things is going to be very critical when it comes to getting things online right so that's why we talk about the industry 4.0 all right so when you talk about uh, industry 1.0 uh, which was uh, in the george stephens and days where we are focusing on how to generate the mechanical power whether to steam engines or to coal engines so there it is more about the mechanization and producing the power so the rail engines the motors were the invention those point of time 1.0 when in industry 2.0 we are talking about mass production ford uh, assembly plant is a classic example of mass production line so now they wanted to make profit so they want to produce it in big numbers so mass production was given due importance how i can do mass production what automation process i can follow that was there third industry 3.0 is more about automation and uh, optimization so using computers using the computer aided tools can i make it more reliable more faster with less number of manpower with more accuracy so that was the point when it comes to industry 3.0 people are focusing on uh, using the computers to make things faster cheaper better at the same time at a good optimum cost so that was industry 3.0 now comes industry 4.0 what is industry 4.0 in simple terms industry 4.0 talks about cyber physical systems now we have all the we have computers we have machines uh, we have human being everything is there but we are now working on a global platform sitting from chennai or sitting from bangalore you need to control a machine which is in taiwan can we do it you can do it that is what we do it through the industry 4.0 adopting a cyber physical system will ensure that sitting from any place in the world you can control any machine uh, with accuracy so you need to use lot of platforms to connect your computer to the machine which you are going to control so that uh, series of things which is getting connected is coming under industry 4.0 it includes internet of things it includes some online platforms it includes some database management it includes security control it includes data analytics uh, it includes robotics it includes uh, programming so it is not one particular thing people say iot iot yes it is one set of thing but that alone is not uh, industry 4.0 you have a lot of things which comes into picture which really forms your industry 4.0 because if you want to control a machine the machine should become a robot so you should know how to convert a regular machine a conventional machine into a robot controlled machine that is program controlled action controlled machine so that is uh, one action and the, the robot or the computer has to talk in terms of programming language the code has to be prepared we use python we use other softwares other programming languages which is used to control that is uh, uh, the thing and then we had to use the internet services we used to uh, control the internet services we used to connect the internet services mm, uh, We used to connect the internet services. I'm sorry, uh, some flash message. Uh, internet services to make sure that there is a connectivity all over there. And then we, uh, I request uh, someone to please stop annotating. I think uh, please stop annotations. All right. Uh, so this is about internet 4.0. So we are talking about the world moving towards internet 4.0. that is number one and second we are also talking about what will be the life after lockdown so that is the area where the student as well as the existing product development people has to focus on think about the safety think about uh, environmental safety think about um, 
um, recycling the materials think about coming out with new designs from the scratch we are all talking the people the companies from the chinese are going to come to india but okay but if they come to india are we ready with the people my answer is no we don't know uh, how to do from scratch we have some people only a limited set of people but we need lot of lot of engineers who have to do it so that's where today's topic on industrial design becomes more critical right so with this note i am just getting into the product development process okay my goodness okay so what is a product we all know product is any live object or any services we call as a product however for today's discussion we talk talk about any live product what you see in your day to day life we call as a product product means it can be a automobile it can be a mouse it can be a water bottle it can be a mobile phone it can be a aeroplane anything we generalize this word product for each and every live product what we see in life including a shirt button is a product including a, so that is how we define the product okay when you talk about a product there are different steps we follow to make sure that the product comes out in the market in the way it planned okay so this is how the product development process looks like conceptual design industrial design engineering design product simulation and validation manufacturing design detailing and product data management i'll explain this uh, as we move on so the first stage in the product development process is our concept design Uh, we call it as requirement analysis also uh, the other word given in the uh, industry is requirement analysis so when we will start a design only when there is a need so when a customer wants something only then you have to design if the customer don't want anything please do not do anything uh, silly because that product is not going to be sold in the market only when there is a demand you should start designing and design the product which is in demand that is what uh, the the design principle says okay necessity is the mother of invention or need is the mother of invention when there is a need then you start designing it but unfortunately many companies startup companies they start designing something based on the knowledge what they gained but the product whatever they design whether it is required by the people or by the the common man or by the target audience if they don't have an answer for that then it is a problem the reason is the product may be a very good product but it don't find a market people are not ready to take the product so you need to find out whether there is a buyer for your product whether there is a need for the product and then only you can start your design process okay so let us assume that there is a need so who will go and find out whether there is a need or not that is where our uh, the marketing people so called the mba people and the market researchers they come into pictures they call as a market researchers right what they will do is they will go to the market they will conduct survey they will find out what is the problem faced by the common man or the uh, the users when i say common man it includes the industry users what are the challenges they are facing and what is the kind of solution they are looking at so that they will make a note they will come and give it to the the company people so that is where we start defining the problem okay i request each one of you to be in mute mode so i mean if you are new entry please uh, please be in mute mode i request each one of you to be in mute mode i uh, request the convener and uh, to make sure that uh, people are in mute mode okay right so defining the problem is the first step mm, maybe uh, okay that is uh, number 1 second once you got the requirement then they will check whether any already existing product is there in the market or not i have a requirement but whether any product is already there in the market yeah there is a product in the market 
then why what is the problem with that product why the product is why people still want a new product what are the missing information in the product so then they will start creating a new product based on the the lessons or the gatherings what they have and then they prepare this the concept generation right so first is they get the uh, problem then they will compare with the existing product then they come out with a concept which is new which is uh, which is going to give a complete solution once it is done then they will check okay i have my product ready whether my product is good to sell in the market these are all paperwork sir there is no software involved yeah there are some software involved we have pwd and other things there are some small small what you can say a small application software not a cad software they are all done through some application to benchmark your ideas and once uh, the selection of once they evaluate a product okay if i have a product like this how is it better than the the products which is there in the market what are the selling points who are the target customers who are the distributors and how is the distribution can take place what is the minimum product we can sell all those things they will do this is basically on a selection concept this is a very critical part of your design this is where the company may go right or go wrong right this is called as a concept design in fact if you look at uh, a lot of uh, schools lot of colleges they should start talking about concept design in the beginning days if you are a representative of a college i request each of the people to start teaching this in depth in the first year itself if you are a student please start learning it because uh, i have uh, relations in uh, europe as well as in uh, us in the 6th grade or 7th grade itself they are uh, talking about this uh, concept design it's a gentle product they are talking about all these things in detail it is a part of the project work itself they have to come out with a concept design they have to evaluate uh, the requirement and do it see in the 6th or 7th grade they are doing it we have to start doing it in a beginning level itself concept design is very important uh, very very important when it comes to the success of the industry if you are good in this yes you can become a entrepreneur at the same time whatever action you do will be successful well here they design this concept very good then what is the next stage in this the next stage is industrial design okay now they accepted this product is going to be good it is having good sales point now let us go and start creating this product okay now i am asking few questions uh, to the audience you are going to buy a product in the from the market you are going to buy a product from the market on what basis you will buy the product what are all the factors or parameters you look before buying a product uh, i like to see your chat messages here what factors uh, let you consider yourself as a common man what factors influence the buying decision yeah super i am getting uh, lot of responses good very nice uh okay cost quality durability brand exactly mm. brand few more please service design cost yeah durability cost quality so we are in india right we cannot uh, rule out the cost factor right right cost and quality most okay i think uh, there are many ladies uh, here also when you when you when you go to a supermarket you see a lot of things suddenly you go buy a product you it may not have a need or sometimes you go and pick the product and buy it on what basis initially you will see the cost uh mr patel has uh, come up with one more thing uh, yeah that's nice okay the first thing what matters is aesthetic or look aesthetic or look or appearance whatever the english words you want to coin uh, please sir aesthetic look appearance whatever you call this is the first thing we will attract do you agree with me this is the first thing 
then comes your next things because straight away we don't pick a product and see the cost first you see the product is good after seeing the product is good then you will uh, look at the price that's how you do right it may be uh, the packaging it can be anything first we go and look uh, if it is very attractive only we first go to the place then take the product and then i will look if it is not attractive we will not even go to the place we will not even pick the product cost becomes uh, uh, redundant over here right so first is look then your cost or quality because this is a debatable word a person like me i will always focus on quality than cost because i always give value for this thing the quality is very good i don't mind cost right yeah, economic handy yes very true uh, so we have to check between cost and quality that is we call value for product so it depends whether whatever amount you are going to spend it is worthable for the thing the cost quality comes a second factor then you comes your um, life so how uh, what is the life of the product life means it doesn't mean that long life if it is a pen you all know it is a matter of 15 days to 30 days at least it should work for 30 days or 15 days it should not be a one day thing if it unless it is a 1 rupee use and throw pen even today the 3 rupees pen are asked to give at least 30 days of life that's a true right so second is uh, uh, the cost and uh, the quality third comes your life fourth comes uh, ergonomic design whether the product is good to use because who is going to use the product we the common people we are going to use the product suppose the product is very tough to use when i use this product in my hand it is paining for me let us say a uh, propena uh, uh, what you can say a grind a mixy uh, uh, let's take a common thing now it is locked down even uh, gens have started using the mixy and grinders uh, we have started out doing all the household work okay so we have started using the household product i think i believe so lockdown uh, you started helping people right so if you start using this because you can see a pain uh, sometimes suppose if the product is giving pain while using do you we do you use this product no so we need to design the product in such a way that it should be easy for the people to use so that is actually called as a uh, designer's job is to make sure that he has to submit multiple ideas 21 ideas he has to submit in uh, different views so if i start doing that 21 different ideas using computer aided application like solid works or uh, something i will do the design for 5 6 months i want to finish it in one or two days what is the best way of doing it sketching take a paper take a pencil i have an idea in my mind start representing your ideas quickly in a better way using sketching <coughs> there are some proportions some standards are there you have to follow that do it so maximum 1 hour you will come out with one sketch so if you want 21 sketch you have to spend 20 hours say spend 2 3 days you will have sketchings and then spend another 2 3 days to refine the sketches within a week you can submit all your uh, product ideas to the management that is product sketching then they will approve okay these are all good they will approve some sketches they want to see it in 3d so the next stage is you go and create the same models in 3d we call it as uh, One second. Uh, we call it as the clay model, or you guys, three D printing, foam model, uh, POP models, anything you can use. But uh, in automobile industries, they use clay model. Why they use clay model? What is the benefit of a clay model instead of a foam, wood, or any other model? What is the benefit of a clay model? I think very simple. It's very simple answer. What is the benefit of a clay model? I like to see in the chat box your responses. uh okay easy making that's uh, correct thing so what you can do is you can add material and remove material suppose i excessively remove the material then i can want i can still add the material as far as the clay is wet you can keep on modifying no strength is not a part it is like you can keep uh, changing it as far as it is wet and uh, no no not economical i am sorry economical is not there because clay industrial clay is very costly for every 800 gram you have to spend 1200 rupees so. Ah uh, yeah, it is. You can easily change it. If I suppose I made an extra cut, I can add material. If I made an extra material, I can make a cut. 
But what happens if I use a wood or a foam? If you made a cut, then again adding it is very tough for us. Alright, that's why people prefer. If you are 3D printer, yeah, I made a 3D printer, but I suppose the product has come out slightly bigger. Then again gone, you have to again uh, come out with one more print. Right, but here I can reuse it. Yeah, reusable is a correct word, uh, exact word. Fine, that's why people prefer a clay modeling in this case. And it also be lightly flexible also, so that's the way they use it. And you can have a very, uh, what you can say, curved surfaces. Whereas if you use a, a foam, I think creating curved surfaces will be a little bit challenging. I'm not saying it's not, cannot be done, but very challenging, very laborsome. That's the reason that people go for clay modeling. And, and once the clay model, the 3D printed is ready, they accepted it. Uh, you may create some at least uh, 10 to 12 models. They will come, the stakeholders will come and decide few things. Then the selected clay models, they will scan it in 3D scanner. Then they will take it to the computer and then they convert into surface geometries. So that is also a part of reverse engineering. They say reverse engineering, it has a lot of applications. One such application is con converting the clay model into the computer model. I show some videos. Uh, just give me some time. I, I will just go through this thing. The reverse engineering. You will get a complete surface of that model in the computer. So the reverse engineering process is converting the physical model into computer model. Physical to convert, uh, physical to computer model will be done through uh, this reverse engineering process. Then once you got this in the computer, I need to add more style to it. It has to be more appearance. Appearance should be very good. That's where we use some styling tools uh, like alias or uh, uh, we use uh, uh, what is this song? One second. Ice and Surf. These are some products which is used for uh, the product styling purpose. And finally, we do ergonomics. We have a lot of uh, ergonomics tools, softwares which will do the ergonomic study. All right, this is about the industrial design. So I will put a question. I, pre I believe there will be some mechanical or electrical engineers in this group. You teach SOLIDWORKS or you work on SOLIDWORKS or CATIA or any modeling, 3D modeling suit tools. Normally you get a drawing, that drawing you will convert into 3D. I hope uh, you all agree with me. My question is, how do you get these drawings? You get a 2D drawing, right? Front view, side view, top view or some one or two views. From that only you convert into 3D. Yes. But how do you get this 2D drawing? From where you got the 2D drawings? Suppose assume you are going a new product design, completely new product. There, there is uh, no existence. You are completely coming out a new product. Where you will get the 2D drawings? Okay, I like to hear from the chat box. So. Uh, AutoCAD, fine. AutoCAD is just you are creating whatever you have. But how do you know this is my shape? This is my size. How do you know that? You say it is 20 or 30 or 40. Imagination. But how do you imagine? How do you say that my imagination is correct? Functionality, imagination. So actually, you get the 2D drawings, which is an output of the industrial design. So what you do in industrial design, you put a rough sketch. It is no, it is not having any, it is not having any dimension at all. It is a rough sketch. Then you do a prototyping. When you're doing a rough sketch, it is used proportions. It uses proportions, no assumption, no assumption, assumption and all, uh, uh, you are gone. When you do assumptions, you are, you will be assumed that you are not useful and they will throw you out. Uh, I am sharing because I have some 10 years of experience in the automotive industry. The moment we know that you are making a lot of assumptions, you are thrown out. You are thrown out because assumptions will be killing your design product itself. Okay. Mm. When you are doing um, sketching, you do proportions, you do some perspective, no dimensions. But after that, I convert into a 3D model. When I convert into 3D model, I just again mix the proportions. So how do we know the proportions? That is in the rule book. So if you are designing an automobile, there is a proportional rule which is in the rule book. That is, if it is a sedan, then it, the, the wheel size, the, diff, the wheel size, uh, the height of the sedan should be two times the wheel size. The distance between the two wheels should be three times the wheel diameter. And the distance between the front end to back end should be 500 of times the wheel diameter. This is called as a proportion model. Where you will learn this? You have to learn in a course. There the trainer will teach you. Because for every type of car, the proportions are going to change. 
if i'm going to design a sedan car my proportions are different if i'm going to uh, design a suv my proportions are going to be different if i'm going to design a, a sports type of car my proportions are going to be different proportional sense the width length and height so that proportions will be uh, learned in the sketching and then when you do the 3d modeling again it will be again uh, from that uh, sketching you are going to prepare it then we do ergonomic study we keep on changing the models then you scan and you put it in the computer then you take some dimensions from this whatever you created from that you take the dimensions and the shape that is called as the ga drawings we call we call general arrangement drawings we call ga drawings ga drawings are rough drawings i mean they are not final drawings they call us general arrangement drawings they will not have any tolerance and all they will have the shape and the dimension that's all so wh where you will get this uh, general arrangement drawings this is the output of the output of uh, uh, industrial design will be ga drawings finally you will prepare the ga drawings that's what we prepare in industrial design this ga drawings only we give it to the next department called as engineering design department they will use this drawings they convert into 3d cad model then they will convert into they will do analysis then they will um, fine tune it and try to make it correct that is the next stage okay let me complete the uh, the next thing then i will ask the, we'll take up the questions now from the industrial design it goes to the next department called as the engineering design we call end this is actually r and d department this is where r and d is coming into picture r and d d and d design and development all this will happen here only next we have end this is called as end e and engineering and design now the person will give that uh, general alignment drawing you will get this ga drawings that is what you are seeing in your uh, workbooks right the 2d drawings that model you convert into a proper 3d model using various software so whether it can be solid works catia Uh, if you are a mechanical guy if you are a civil guy you use uh, 3ds max you use sketchup or uh, revit which are software convert into proper a uh, parametric modeling that is called as a product modeling then you simulate it my 3d model i need to check whether the performance is good for structural multi body dynamics fluid dynamics and fmfea crash analysis all this validation will be done using the cae options that is engineering design so this department will take care of end actually in india we were doing only end because this earlier thing what i said as industrial design we used to outsource it to other countries they will give the ga drawings with the ga drawings we convert into a 3d model and analysis that is how it happens but today now we are forced to do this because if we, instead of outsourcing this thing this is where they take the patent <coughs> the pattern comes here only <coughs> pattern is not coming here pattern is coming here only so you know aqua fina bottle we are producing the water in india we are manufacturing everything in india but we are paying a small royalty for every aqua fina water bottle sold in india reason is the patent of the purification process and the bottle design is with uh, pepsico so they are making money so if you get the patent then for every product you are selling you will get a royalty so that is something india is missing and if you get your own industrial design right then you are going to make money right so this is your uh, anyhow let us come to the main subject it is called engineering design so once you do the engineering design once it is completed they will try to find in the model initially you are given a, a dimension now they will try to see that this dimension is pakka then they do lot of analysis they will see where and all failures are happening they will increase the thickness increase the length or increase the breadth or decrease the breadth change the material do lot of uh, trial and error or validation analysis then finally they come with a drawing called as the the what you can say the pre production drawings this is not production drawing this is called as pre production drawings this is pre production drawings which they produce they, it will keep on changing because every test you do you will keep finding some errors and then keep on modifying it finally you come out with the pre production drawings and the engineering design right then you would next send it to next department called as product manufacturing where the tool designers will come into picture they will look at your product they will see that how this has to be manufactured if it is a sheet metal what is the kind of press tools i have to use if it is a plastic <coughs> how i have to design my mold design that is your uh, uh, 
uh, core and cavity if it is a casting cope and drag how it will be designed uh, if it is a very complex shape how i am going to design the complex shape so they will uh, see that if there is any changes required because if, they, if it is very complex if they cannot prepare the tooling for that they will again send it back to you saying that i am sorry i cannot uh, manufacture this with that uh, tolerance what you are saying you please uh, go and change the model again this person or this person both of them has to change the design and again they will go and do the tool design tool design is like your machining if it is a solid model it is machining if it is a if it is a plastic you go for mold design if it is a, a, a sheet metal you go for press tool design <coughs> sorry then you have to design the fixtures for holding the products this is completely tool design once it is all done then finally you send it for the detailing here you have to go for the tool design detailing as well as for the product detailing and then you apply geometric dimension and tolerancing then only the product will come out so this is actually your the pdp or what calls a product development process okay and plm is someone uh, concept which is connecting all this together you may need to outsource this for some other products since you don't want to do it yourself you want to outsource this so which vendor which part which revision number i want to outsource it which uh, number is connected to other uh, bomb we call it bomb e bomb m bomb there are different bombs are there how the materials are getting connected how the data is used synchronously together that is called as plm today we are talking about alm application life cycle management that is the next phase we are talking about okay that, that's again a different concept it's a database management that's a different concept altogether so after this only this detailed drawing is actually called as a production drawings this is your production drawings this drawing only will go to the shop floor this drawing sheet only will give to the shop floor person oh boy this is a drawing you start manufacturing it this will go to the shop floor supervisor shop floor supervisor will assign the people for this <laughs> and once the product comes out they will go for the qa qc which is another department <coughs> this is the general product development process which they follow in the industry <coughs> in between the la symposium uh, build test all this thing will be coming here when you talk about engineering and all design here for each analysis they will do something called build test build means it's a prototype test they do uh, the design and they try to validate once they come out of the optimizing they again create a physical prototype the, this is alpha prototype this is beta prototype they call beta prototype they do the physical prototype and do the test and make sure that the product is good enough okay then finally they go for the manufacturing process this is how the typical product development process looks like uh, this i am sure many of you will know about this but still i want to stress on this point uh, i hope it is uh, clear and informative i will take up questions if you have uh, this point of time before showing some videos about industrial design or if you have any doubts you can uh, put it in the chat box i am waiting for a comment i am just giving a uh, one or two minutes to uh, check your comments and see that whether i can clarify your doubts uh, thank you mr mr patel plm means uh, product life cycle management uh, product life cycle uh, management that's expansion what it does is uh, the drawings the 3d models and uh, the assembly models and the vendor details everything is interconnected so if you make changes in the drawing it will automatically get reflected in the assembly drawing also with the vendor that the product has changed so you keep changing the tool also likewise okay i think there is no further doubts uh, uh which uh, i didn't get your question mr gokul which is the most preferred design you were talking about a software or what what you are talking about it or you were mentioning about a software or mentioning about uh, uh the out of this uh, explanation software changes company to company suppose if i using heavy machineries if i using heavy machineries and complex products very complex uh, designs they preferably use one of these two katia or nx that's why you can see lot of automobile companies they use uh, one of these two products katia or nx when it comes to small products we call sme products small and medium products 
SM products I can saw. Small and medium engineering products. They preferably use SOLIDWORKS. Say water bottle, pen. UG only is called as NX, sir. UG, the name of the UG is changed to NX. SOLIDWORKS, CREO, uh, what do you call Solid Edge. They use this uh, tools. So. Yeah, mm, then uh, again, do you, apart from this, they use a lot of other, for industrial design, they use alias. It's the most used product for industrial design, alias. For manufacturing, mostly they use a local thing or the best tool is they use NX Cam, Master Cam, and Edge Cam. Again, uh, the explanation is uh, as simple as that. Wherever pirate software is available, they will go for it. But only proper companies will go for a proper licensing. Uh, product manufacturing maybe yeah manufacturing feasibility yes correct they do dfm design for manufacturing uh, design for assembly dfa the product whatever you're designing whether it can be manufactured or uh, assembled uh, that they will check and then they'll go for uh, the tool designs then they will give the uh, right manufacturing uh, sorry, you're talking about simulation again. This empty number of software most popular in India is ANSYS, uh, no doubt about it. For structural, fluent for uh, this thing, LS Dyna for crash. Uh, okay, and they use Nastron for uh, aerospace application because uh, our NASA uses Nastron regularly. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Vinod Kumar is asking a direct question which actually the student has to learn. I have to give the choice to the student. If he is planning to get into an automotive industry, I suggest him to learn Katia, body and white design, okay, then uh, CFD, then uh, ergonomic design, uh, then crash analysis. Suppose if you want to go on styling, then I will talk about learning sketching, alias, and reverse engineering and uh, and if it is if he's planning to go in a small company then i prefer him to learn solidworks or creo uh, whichever is available solidworks or creo is good for uh, small and medium enterprises more than creo solidworks is more famous creo was once upon a time it was famous that is during my uh, college days but today solidworks has taken over completely solidworks and ansys and mastercam will do the job Okay, let, it is going more towards a software oriented session. I am just only talking about the popular softwares. That doesn't mean other softwares are not in demand. Company to company, the products may differ. But what I uh, mentioned here is a popularity basis. On popularity basis, they use by more number of companies. All right. Okay, I think from this question session, let us move towards the industrial design. I think I have already crossed my uh, time limit. I may extend for another 15 minutes and try to complete the show. So I talk about conceptual design. People will study this conceptual design in three areas. Whether it is useful, it is meaningful, it is delightful. When the product falls within this range, then this product is good to go. If the product, after doing, you have to map it. When the product uh, result lies like this, it will be delightful, but you won't have a sales. It will be meaningful, but still you won't have a sales. It will be useful, but still you won't have a sales. The sales will happen only if it is falling in this area. So you have to make sure that whatever you are doing, it falls here only. So that's actually the conceptual design. Industrial design. Okay. So industrial design is all about sketching. I'll just show you a small video about showing what is industrial design. Mm 
this is actually the industrial design that is a sketching process you start with the sketching process whatever is there in idea this you can do it in less than 30 minutes only thing is you have to learn how to do the sketching so you don't need to be an artist for this uh, uh, sincerely believe me i was also a proper uh, uh, scale and pencil person but once i started learning this industrial design i had to start learning it it's a small some techniques you have to learn you can become a good industrial sketcher right this is the first step you have to learn um so you can get a job as a product designer industrial designer creative engineer r and d professional or d and d professional entrepreneur all these things this kind of jobs are suitable if you do the industrial design okay these are uh, the companies who have hired the industrial design people in the last 3 4 years you can go and check the, all these companies so i have just given a snapshot these people are hiring only industrial designers because they want someone who can create from the beginning okay in fact uh, some of our students are working in this company that's why i have mentioned few companies in the list logia motors are doing the three wheelers so, that electric uh, three wheelers so, yula is a bangalore company they are doing the two wheeler design that electric uh, two wheeler two wheeler cycles etc of course these are very famous companies you know and uh, our own ether uh, in bangalore who is uh, doing the the ether electric scooters clra is central leather research institute you look at many companies that is very important right so what you will learn is fundamentals benchmarking a design and you will be learning sketching and digital rendering next stage is you have to convert your this thing design into the clay model uh, that's clay model option i'm just showing a small video about how the clay modeling will be done this is a alpha type model when i say alpha it's a beginner model the scale factor is 1 is to 16 or 1 is to 32 it's only a miniature to see that how that object looks like at the end it's like a decision making uh, uh, prototype okay let me show you please uh, see the video i'll just fast forward the video because uh, we need to run a lot of things so uh, we'll just uh, fast forward the video wherever i feel it's uh, dragging So the final Okay, this is the final model uh, which was uh, painted and brought into picture. This is the prototype output of a clay model. All right, what you see in the video, that's uh, the second stage of a design process. Then uh, they'll do the product styling. Before product styling, I'll show you the reverse engineering. Where is this? Just a second. So this is the reverse engineering process. So you can see that they scan that object it can be in a static mode or in a dynamic mode you can just scan what this uh, what they use here is a 3d scanner and then the scan it the scan output is you can see that it is getting copied into the computer this is called as a, the cloud point data cpd we call cloud point data but this is all only outer surface they don't have anything and if you if you do it it will be only points it is not a surface at all you have to see that it's not a surface it's a point shaded point that's all a lot of points uh, a group it's shaded all right so this is this is the next stage the clay model whatever you design they will scan like this and they'll take it in the computer and then they'll go for the styling portion of it so this is where they do the styling portion i'll show you the styling thing
what you see here is a zebra analysis which is showing that the surface quality is very good if you paint whether the surface uh, will be looking very reflective because we call classier surface classier surface can be studied over here that's alias is the best software for classier surfacing that's why all automotive companies use alias for uh, uh, for the design of the outer sheet metal products you can see that in the video they will be adjusting that uh, bandwidth if the pattern is very equal that means the surface quality is good if the pattern is uh, very thick and thin the pattern is very bad you can do a study you can see here this pattern is very bad that means if you if you paint on this particular surface it looks very horrible and the look itself will not be like very good so you need to fix it up that's what they will do it in their uh, tools they'll try to fix this so the surface is looking very decent audio would have come uh, hello sir i can hear you sir okay uh, in between yeah there was a little less than a second uh, it tripped off and came back i hope now it is okay i hope uh, just type okay if you feel that yes sir. you can hear me and you can see the uh, powerpoint yeah thank you very much i'm sorry for the inconvenience sir. that's a power issue well uh just moving next so then we'll talk about uh, the ergonomic design this is actually ergonomic design you can see this the mouse see we are having this gripper point we are having this points because when i use the mouse i i should make sure that it's not paining it should not twist my mouse you can see how the mouse twist action suppose you want to uh, do some uh, twisted actions see how that my neutral uh, twist angles is going to make a pain so the study of this is called ergonomics is very important when it comes to industrial design so they use softwares which is uh, will study the ergonomic design you can see that if once i design a steering wheel i will just put a mannequin over there and try to understand whether the steering wheel is good enough for you so when he is driving it whether any pain point is there you can see some dots will come which will see nothing but your the joints so uh, when you are rotating how the points are reacting green means okay not problem red means yes there is a strain point when you are access accessing other products whether you are clashing with the steering so all this uh, interference and clash detection and also the pain areas you can detect using the, the ergonomic design which is very very important for a product sales sir i am saying that it is very important people are giving very less importance to it because if you look at the product the product will have repeated sales only with its ergonomic design one time sales no problem you can sell something uh, tell something and you can sell the product but if the product has to be repeated continuously then the trust of the customer should be there with you if you want the trust 
then ergonomic design should be compulsorily there in your system right and then you talk about safety so this is another area where uh, we have to give importance when i say safety it is not about that crash safety and all it's a simple safety for example i am creating a socket a plastic socket i should make sure that the socket holes having enough insulation because there will be a small kid who may go and accidentally touch that you should have a resistive mechanism so that only when you plug the power source should come out so can you do something the wires and the plugs should have a proper uh, material insulating materials i am talking about a simple product and uh, the rubber grip should be there for holding this thing and uh, the safety equipment what are the product which has harmful fire which will create fire which will create uh, electricity so those products when you are designing safety of it is very important because it will harm the life of the people who are using it so the safety part of it is very critical okay someone is trying to unmute i request to mute it we will have open session uh, next 5 minutes so okay uh, the critical part of it will be uh, design this is called as the basic safeties there is one more safety called as product safety where you do a lot of uh, analysis crash analysis that is separate this is basic safety the product whatever you design when it is used by the public like humans it is free from them to cause damage for them that safety also has to be done this entire process what i explained from the sketching to the safety which includes um, styling clay modeling uh, reverse engineering ergonomics etc this complete set we call it as the the industrial design process then it goes to the next phase called as your the engineering design where you will divide it into cad cae and cam where you start giving the uh, the toolings whether it's an inventor solid works or cati or nx or creo for the cad application for cam uh, you have this so here in cad i'll try to bring baw which is related to automobile world since uh, some of you may have an interest towards automobile i just want to show the video this is baw this is your baw we call body in white the structure what you see on the screen is called as the the body in white which is nothing but the house of the car it is like a walls and roofs of the car this is a most challenging as well as very important design in the car because the engine brakes transmission system this is almost the same for every new model but the body is something which is getting changed every now and then and the body is the one which is protecting our, us from the outside crash outside environment it should be very strong it should be light at the same time it should be uh, stylish it should be good enough that is called as body in white so once i create the styling and sketching then i'll convert into body in white using the baw so that cad if you learn catia you cannot design body in white but if you learn body in white you can design catia you can use catia because body in white is all about you will get only surface information the fellow industrial design fellow will give you the surface design from the surface i have to create this uh, sheet metal parts how do i create it what is the cross section what is the tolerance uh, how that uh, each shape will look like what path it has to follow that is what you have to learn in body in white that is where we will go for similarly if you use a plant then you have to go for a piping uh, call a routing design or piping design when you try to create a aircraft model then you have to go with a, the airfoil design and you have to create the shape accordingly if you go for a wing design again it has to follow the airfoil design so i suggest people not to learn the software learn the application with the software then it will be very useful companies want only application people not software people uh, it's a message from you people say whether i should learn catia whether i should learn solid works my simple thing is can you design a product that's all you know solid works or catia i don't mind at all i give one project to you you have to design this body in white or you design an airplane or you design a uh, plastic bottle or you design a speaker or design a mobile phone i will give you one hour can you design something and uh, create a 3d model you should know the steps sir. if you design you are employed if you cannot design i know only 10 commands or 100 commands but i don't know where to start where to finish you are not employable the difference is skills and knowledge 
people have a lot of knowledge but what today people want to get a job is skills i will put it in a very simple example you want to drive a car you want to learn car driving i will give you a nice manual very book very good manual with lot of pictures saying that this is how you have to open the door of the car this is how you have to put the ignition key this is how you have to start this is how you have to press the clutch this is how you have to press the accelerator this is the steering system everything neat and good i will explain in the book okay then i give it to you to learn it for one month you learn it then i ask you to write the examination you write it very good fine then i give a card to you and say okay drive can you drive it can you drive comfortably without hitting anyone or without causing harmful to you also that is the real difference that's called as a skills and knowledge our people have a lot of knowledge no doubt about it our people are learning a lot they are learning many things the law knowledge is very good but skill is what they want the company wants skill the reason is i want to finish the project in the next 10 days 15 days if i give the project and i'll get the money from the customer if you keep exploring yourself where i'll get my money so that is where our people wants a skill skills has to come you should know how to design a baw you should know how to design a product on your own suppose even if it's a plastic bottle it should it is having three things right it is having a cap it is having a thread it is having a base how you will design a base what should be a proportion of a base how it will stand if it is a flat surface if it is a non flat surface how it will stand how may base you can see that all the design is not flat base you take any bottle and see if the base is not always flat except for one or two it will be slightly tapper why it is so even if you have a irregular surface it can still hold that is the basics of design they should know that and when they design it if they do it they are employable so this is the area which we want uh, when i select people i will only look at the constant common sense in them how you design it we know they are uh, young people we are not going to ask uh, uh, out of range questions only thing is what is this common sense or uh, how he designs a uh, basic thing how he thinks the product how he thinks in the customer point of view and uh, what is that uh, application knowledge not the software knowledge if he is having that even if you know 10 commands in the software i don't mind but he can he create one product with the 10 commands can you start from somewhere and begin, finish somewhere if he do it he is employed he is employed i hope you also agree with me i hope you all will agree with me i hope you all agree with me all right so this is what we try to do of course uh, product analysis product manufacturing is a separate topic which is not for today uh, we will uh, definitely look on it in a, some other uh, uh, sessions when it comes to analysis yes we have lot of tools like uh, ansys cfd uh, crash analysis multi body dynamics a lot of tools which is uh, there for the engineering design portion of it and then finally in manufacturing you can go for tool design fixture design and machining design that is again another process right anyhow that is not covered in depth because that's not the agenda for today we are talking about the design phase and particularly the industrial design phase i believe that i have given some basic information about industrial design because i i will teach industrial design for uh, not less than 3 months so because it has so many things to be covered but i am trying to give a glance of a glimpse of it in just uh, 60 minutes time okay uh, hope uh, you find it useful uh, i have completed my presentation on industrial design so if you have any questions i am open enough to take your questions okay pw stands for body in white sir if you look at that uh, sheet metal body uh, Uh, one second if you look at a sheet metal body the sheet metal body before painting it looks very white in color that's why they kept the uh, uh, thing as body in white uh, yes someone unmuted and trying to speak please ma'am now you can do that hello hello yes If you have any questions, any clarifications required, or anything you want to just touch again or repeat again, uh, we, I, we can do right now.
uh, if you still if you want to unmute yourself and talk please feel free to do it uh, now it's a open session you can unmute yourself and talk if you want to unmute means uh, go to the participant list and click on your thing and you can right click and do unmute or click anywhere in the window you will get a icon there you have the mic you can just click it to become unmute okay i think uh, we don't have doubts now um so with this note anyone there no ma thing khali aro abhi hello abhi sir you are unmuted you are unmuted sir hello okay i think uh, there is no doubts huh? so with this note uh, i thank you very much for your participation thank you very much um, my my style of presenting is very straight because i don't want to beat around the bush this is what happens this is what it goes that's why i will uh, just do it and i thank it was a very interactive session uh, because some of you were asking questions probably i will be glad uh, if you had asked uh, many more questions because if you ask questions only we can explain more and more on the thought process so all right now uh, So thank you very much, sir. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Kapil and sir. If you have any closing words, uh, you can just uh, do that, sir. Thanks, the audience. Sir. Yeah. For the uh, informative speech, in your speech you highlighted the concept design, industrial design, based on your uh, practical experience and the uh, interaction with the partners of your company. It was very good. Mm. And also you discussed about the product sketching, clay modeling, product styling, and rules engineering. So whatever the video you showed, these are new to us. and most of the audience participants also were uh, first time maybe knowing about these practices and both of the mm-hmm. organizing committee as well as the college i thank you for uh, participating in this uh, webinar thank you sir yes. it's my pleasure sir thank you very much uh, thank you audience keep safe keep yourself healthy wish you all the best sir thank you very much thank you thank you participants thank you ಬಾಲಾಜಿ ಸರ್ ಹೇಳಿ ಸರ್ ಅದು ಫೀಡ್ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಹೇಳ್ಬಿಡಿ